Hey YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Foldable Human here. Just wanted to take a moment to talk about vlogging and a bunch of other stuff. I don't know. That it was a, it was like a little a little spiritual experience in the sense it was a good meditative moment to kind of sit back and and think about the channel and stuff. And this has been something that's been on my mind for a while now. But I've been wanting for a while to just kind of pivot the channel, like lightly pivot the channel to just to be just a little less cynical. And that's not to say be more frivolous. You can be engaged and excited and still be, you know, in depth and intricate and invested. So that's that's kind of the plan and the hope. And I'm gonna get out of this car's way. As always, I feel it's important to cover some basic ground, make sure that we have a shared vocabulary for the subject at hand. So let's start with the obvious, perhaps even banal question: what is a vlog? And then we'll use that as a springboard into the follow-up question. No, really, what is a vlog? To start, we need to rewind the clock a bit to the internet before YouTube. Back when the internet was still mostly text with some photos, some savvy forward-thinking people and a whole lot of regular bored people began websites focusing on a journal-like form of casual, slice-of-life storytelling, maybe about a specific subject of interest, like fashion or movies, but just as often about nothing in particular beyond the individual's personal life and insights. By the early 2000s, this storytelling format, these so-called weblogs, had caught on and reached the mainstream. With this mainstreaming, the cumbersome weblog was truncated into the neologism blog. Flash forward to the advent of YouTube, a fresh-faced video platform aiming to give you a place to put your home videos in the same way Photobucket and Flickr had given you a place to put your pics, and the journal-like storytelling came right along with it, birthing the video blog, or vlog. Okay, so why didn't we just skip 90% of that and go straight to vlog is blog but video? And the answer to that is in our second question. No, really, what is a vlog? The key thing inherited from the blog format is the casual nature, the slice of life storytelling, and the perceived authenticity that comes from that tone of delivery. What separates vlogs in texture from other video genres is in the extemporaneous nature of the delivery, even if it's all an illusion, something we'll get back to later. This is actually a slide back from the blog structure. Blogs, as a written medium, are inherently atemporal. Even a stream of consciousness writing style is still going to enjoy a level of craft, a precision in word choice that eludes the temporally synchronous delivery of speech. This format here that I am using right now is scripted. I've written and rewritten paragraphs, moved things around, and paused at this moment in the script to consider where I want to take this next. As a result, it takes on a different feel, a different texture, a different pace, flow, and structure from the more chaotic and rambling vlog. Wording, whether precise or poor and ill-considered, has still been considered. I have had to perform these words at least once before during the writing process, and am now performing them again during the actual recording. And indeed, many of these lines I have recorded multiple times in order to get a performance that has... in order to get a performance that works. But even this might be little more than illusion. The lines between vlog and not vlog are blurred by the medium of YouTube itself, or more specifically, the cultural dialect of YouTube as a fictive space, how YouTube as a collective cultural entity has decided videos should sound. Side note, I say should, but that doesn't actually mean should. Rather, this is an example of what it means when people like me talk about the grammar of film. If you were to take the body of existing content, look at what rises to the top, and then sit down and write out a set of prescriptive rules based on the outcomes, essentially reverse engineering the rules from the product, that would give you the grammar of the medium. One of the most core grammatical rules of YouTube is the absence of silence, manifested in both a style of speech and a style of editing. 
Blogs, by the nature of their creation, trend towards chaotic and loose. When we're speaking extemporaneous, we pause to collect our thoughts, we um and ah uh and uh and we repeat ourselves. I don't know, that was, it, was a, it was like a little, a little spiritual experience in the sense that it was a good meditative moment. And because the medium is the message, it's important to remember that for years, up until 2010, YouTube had a hard limit of 10 minutes per video with only a select few accounts permitted to go over that limit. The point being that there were, in the formative days of online video, structural incentives to keep things short. As a result, all pauses have been eliminated from the dialect unless they specifically serve the story. Unless a pause has a purpose to create some form of comedic or emphatical tension, it should be removed. We've already seen this in action, because we've used this exact convention in this very video. It's your boy Foldable Human here, just wanted to take a moment to talk about... vlogging. And a bunch of other stuff. I particularly enjoy how Crown Prince of Logardom John Green described this phenomenon in the 2014 vlog In Pursuit of Quiet. And quiet is an interesting thing to talk about on YouTube because attention has become so fractured on the internet that there is no longer room in YouTube videos for any silence. I think I go back and I watch our videos from 2007 with the jump cuts that are really, really slow, and the space between the jump cuts is just absolutely unbearable. Like in those three silent frames, I think to myself, I might not survive until the end of this video. Note how John is not talking about long pauses in dead air, but a matter of frames. I also picked that video because it, in my opinion, typifies all of the relevant factors of the vlog dialect. It is performed in a real space, that's with a capital R as opposed to a studio or set. He is speaking incredibly fast, the editing has sucked out all dead air, and it uses the jump cut. Now, we've talked about the jump cut a bit before, but I think it's worth pointing out that its explicit purpose in this context is to remove all the vocal tics, all the mistakes that make authentic, personal performance actually authentic and personal. The synthesis here of subject and performance gives us a format that sells itself on a perception of authenticity, the extemporaneous personality of the person doing the vlogging merged with an aesthetic delivery that is decidedly inauthentic the end result becoming a form of hyper-reality. John walks through the airport delivering a continuous monologue across an explicitly discontinuous spatial and temporal canvas. It is a dialect that is so obviously synthetic that it becomes authentic, so clearly a simulation that it feels hyper-real. This hyper-real cadence has, for better or worse, become intrinsic to the wider dialect. Started in vlogs, it is now merely what YouTube sounds like. Performers on YouTube speak incredibly fast and edit their speech to make it even faster. Scripted content chooses words and structures that convey the feeling of casual speech. The line between vlog and not vlog are further blurred by the illusory nature of their creation, with vloggers repeating a statement several times, refining delivery and wording until they get a version that they are happy with, essentially scripting in performance and then editing in, well, editing, meaning that even the authenticity is not that authentic. Of course, this is all in flux. In the course of a decade, we've already seen the dialect evolve and shift, there's more that we could go into, and many of the subjects here I'd like to come back to in the future. The jump cut in particular is often singled out as a staid and worn out aesthetic convention, more fake than hyper real, and there's a backlash against the vocabulary ticks. I mean, I opened this video with an intentional parody of what we have collectively decided YouTube videos sound like. So what do you think? What parts of the vlog dialect are here to stay, and what's just a passing fad? What will YouTube sound like in another decade? Let me know in the comments. On an unrelated note, PBS Idea Channel will be wrapping up in a couple months, August 2017. I've put some links in the doobly-doo, so I wanted to ensconce in video form my deep thanks to them for their work over the years, and Mike, I'm just going to straight up pillage your dialect now that you're no longer using it. <laughs>